All right, seventh graders, lesson 66 on circumference in pi. So working with circles here, different parts of a circle. If I have a line that starts in the middle and goes to the edge, we call that the radius. If I have a line that goes from one side to other and goes through the middle, we call that the diameter and the line, or if we're talking about the perimeter of the circle, the distance all the way around the circle, we call that the circumference. So those are some of the terms that we want to know. And then we also have the term pi. The symbol will look like that. And we call that pi, P-I, and a numerical representative is approximately 3.14 and we'll also be learning the fraction 22 over 7 so those are two different ways to represent pi so those are the main terms that we want to learn uh, for this lesson so what is pi really well with pi if we uh, take a circle build a circle here what mathematicians learned is that if you stretched a string all the way across the diameter of a circle, and then you cut that string so that it was exactly the length, and then you laid it around the outside, you would get one, so that would be one piece of string. And you start it again, and you laid a second length of string, the diameter of it. And then you started a third string. You could get one, two, three full strings to go around. And you'd still have this little space right here that you had to connect to make that string go all the way around. And that string was 0 0.14 or... Uh, 14% of a full string. And that's how the mathematicians have come to say pi is approximately 3.14 because I take the diameter here and I can lay one, two, three diameters around the circle and I still need a little bit more, 3.14, so a little bit more than three. Often when we have to round pi, we'll round it to three. So that is how mathematicians came to this idea of pi. The circumference, the uh, perimeter of a circle, is always going to be 3.14 times its diameter. All right. So let's talk about the diameter of the circle here. And we can try to discover it. There is a formula for the circumference of a circle. And that formula is C, which stands for circumference equals pi times the D diameter. So if you know the length of your diameter, you can multiply it by 3.14. So we'll rewrite that here. 3.14 times d, your diameter. And remember, we can substitute sometimes 22 over 7 for 3.14. Just depends on what your book asks for. If it doesn't ask for anything, use 3.14. Sometimes it will specifically tell you to please use the fraction 22 over 7. All right, so... Let's go on and uh, let's pretend this is example one right here. They say the diameter is, uh, is 10 centimeters. So what will my uh, circumference be? All right, so I plug that in 3.14 times 10 because this is 3.14 is pi, 
and this is my diameter, and, and if I multiply these two, I'll get my circumference. So let's multiply those. 0 times 4 will be 0. 0 times 1 will be 0. 0 times 3 will be 0. So I really didn't need that there. Put 0 down here. 0 times 4, 1, 3. So I've just moved my decimal one place. So my circumference for this circle is 31.4 centimeters. Now you'll notice we should also use the wavy equals symbol here because 3.14 is not an exact number. It's a rounded number, but uh, pi is a number that goes on into infinity. It never ends, so we round it to two digits. So that's why we add the approximately symbol in front of our answers when dealing with pi because we aren't using an exact number. All right, now let's take a circle and let's say its radius is only, like in example one, 10 centimeters. Well, again, circumference equals pi times diameter. So in this case, circumference is going to equal 3.14 times, and the diameter is not 10. The radius is 10. The diameter would be 20. So now we can do 3.14 times 20. Zero there. Two times four is eight. Two times one is two. Two times three is six. And there's two numbers after the decimal. So again, I would put my approximately symbol there. And I'd say the circumference is approximately 62.80 centimeters. All right, let's take a look at example two. In example two, I have three different circles. In the first one, they tell me the diameter is 30 inches, and they say use 3.14 for pi. Let's do the math here then for this first example. Remember, circumference equals pi times diameter. So C will equal 3.14, I'm going to rewrite it this way, times my diameter 30. Put the 0 down here, 3 times 4 is 12, carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 more is 4. 3 times 3 is 9, there's two decimal places up there. So again, I would say approximately 94.20 inches. All right, for our second one, they are telling us the diameter is 14 feet, and they say use 22 over 7 for pi. So again, circumference equals pi times diameter. So this time, I'm going to say 22 over 7 times 14 feet, which is really 14 over 1. Now I can go ahead and I see I can reduce this to one half diagonally. 22 times 4 is 44 over 1. So I would say my answer is approximately 44 feet for my circumference. Again, that's the perimeter around the circle is approximately 44 feet if my diameter was 14 feet. All right, our last one here. They only give us the radius as 10 centimeters, and they say leave pi as pi. So again, circumference equals pi times diameter. So in this case, I have pi times, now the radius is 10, so that means the diameter is 20 centimeters. And there is nothing more uh, that I can really do for this one, so I'm going to say circumference. I'm going to change it. I'm going to put the 20 here pi centimeters, and I can keep an equal symbol this time because I'm using an exact number, which is pi. Pi is more exact than 22 over 7 or 3.14, so I can say that it equals. I haven't, there's, you might say there's one more step here to do, but there's nothing more I can do because they told me to keep pi as pi. All right, that's it for today. 
Just remember those four things. Circumference is the perimeter around the circle. Diameter goes across. Radius is halfway across. And pi equals 3.14. You can get started on your lesson practice.